G'day guys, we're going to be talking about Tony Ferguson today and his retirement slash sort of retirement, not retired. I don't know what's going on with Tony Ferguson. I'm sure most of you by now have seen his fight against Michael Chiesa, which honestly wasn't great. He was submitted in the first round again. This is now Tony's eighth straight loss in the UFC after going on a crazy 12 fight win streak. This has to be the most insane run of fights a UFC fighter has ever undertaken. Like 20 fights, he's gone 12 wins in a row, followed straight by eight losses in a row. And it's heartbreaking to see because as we saw on the weekend, like the whole crowd was chanting for Tony. Everybody loves Tony Ferguson. I don't know what it is, but I mean, I love Tony Ferguson. So Tony Ferguson started fighting professionally in 2007 and he actually beat Joe Schilling, who's a world champion kickboxer. Uh, he knocked him out, I believe. And that was before he joined the UFC. He then managed to get into the Ultimate Fighter in 2010 and won that at 170. Then he went down to 155. And on this win streak, like he beat some really, really legit fighters like Anthony Pettis, who was a former champion. Cowboy Cerrone, we all know how good Cowboy was. Uh, Kevin Lee, who was actually really hyped at the time to be a future champion. Unfortunately, that didn't unfold. And then RDA, another former champion. And that's just to name a few. He beat a lot of really good dudes on this 12-fight win streak. And then, unfortunately, he got matched up against Khabib, and that fight just never happened. I think they tried to match it up five times, if I'm not mistaken. And it was just like one injury after another. It's like... What happened to Tony Ferguson? Did he break a mirror? Did he walk under a ladder? What the fuck happened with Tony Ferguson's career? He was the best there was in the world. Everybody wanted to see him fight Khabib because nobody knew what was going to happen. Like Tony Ferguson wasn't just barely scraping by these guys. He was submitting guys submitting really high level guys, knocking guys out, like he was the boogeyman. And that's why they called him El Kikui. But unfortunately, since that win streak, he has lost, as I said, eight in a row. And these are some of the names that he's lost to. Gaethje, Oliveira, Dariush, Chandler, Diaz, Bobby Green and Paddy the Batty. And of course, now we got Michael Chiesa. To be honest, like these last four fights against Paddy, Bobby Green, Diaz, and now Chiesa is where I think he's looked the worst. You could argue in the other fights against Gaethje, Oliveira, Chandler, Dariush, like these were slugfests that he was actually in. I mean, apart from the Paddy fight where he did look kind of decent, he's been submitted three out of his last four fights, which is super strange because he is a black belt in jiu-jitsu and that's kind of his thing. And to be honest, if anybody watched the fight over the weekend, like he just does not have it anymore. And that sucks to say, because as I mentioned earlier, like I am a Tony Ferguson fan. I think everyone watching this is a Tony Ferguson fan. In fact, I don't think I've ever met anybody who isn't a Tony Ferguson fan. How can you not be? When you see the way this guy carries himself, it's really hard to not be a fan, but it's getting to the point now where as fans, I don't think we want to see him fight anymore. And not because he's taken too much damage. Like he got submitted in the last three of his four fights. And then the one against Paddy, he didn't take a lot of damage either. So it's not like he's going out there getting beat up, but... I just don't want to see him have to deal with these losses anymore because I can tell it's taking a toll on him. But you can just see in his demeanor and his body language, like he doesn't want to go out there and keep losing. But the guy is made of something different, man. To be able to keep getting up and going out and fighting, even though you're on this massive losing streak, even though everybody's saying you shouldn't be fighting, and to take those L's and show up for the interviews and just be completely honest and own it and say you weren't good enough and then say you need to get better. Man, he's made from something else because I think most people would have quit by now and unfortunately, I think most people want him to quit. And I say that with all due respect and look, I don't think anybody should be deciding what somebody else does for a living. If he wants to fight for a living, that's up to him. He can fight for a living and he can make money fighting for a living, whether it's with the UFC or with somebody else. I'm sure he can go find another organization that'll pay him a couple hundred grand to fight just because of his name but it's really tough seeing him lose over and over again and i think this was the last straw for the ufc i don't think dana white's going to give him another fight if you didn't see it the post fight interview with dc i'm not going to play it because uh ufc is pretty strict with copyright stuff but tony basically said like he he knows that 
he should be retiring. He knows that this is probably it for him, but he just really doesn't want to retire. And so I think he left everyone confused when he put one glove down and took the other one with him. It's like, that's not a retirement. He didn't, he didn't retire. And the crowd was cheering him on and you could tell that was having a really big effect on him. Like he could feel it, like the support. But I just think he was confusing that with people wanting him to not retire. I think people were cheering him and everyone was showing him so much respect because they wanted to hear him say, okay, guys, that's it. Like I'm done. I've given everything I can to this sport and that's that's it. I'm going to walk away. And I think people would have felt good about that. So anyway, I'm going to play a bit of the post-fight press conference because a lot of what Tony says is super interesting and it gives us a real insight into what he's thinking and what he's going through. I know that's not exactly how you wanted your performance to go. How are you feeling about the entire fight and, and how you performed? Uh, it was a great fight week. I'm going to be real with you. Felt awesome all the way here. Uh, lost some weight. I went from 175 to 167. I did a three mile run and I ended up losing like almost like eight pounds. So the rehydration process was a little bit more interesting for me. Used to cutting all the way down to 55. Um, no bullshit, I felt slow, I felt sluggish. I think we could see that on the wrestling side of me. My fault obviously for warming up. We didn't do a shakeout this morning even though I probably should have or thought about it. Um, that's the reality of the sport. So first things first, I guess, like the body language of Tony, he seems a little bit uncomfortable. Tony always flips the chair around and sits on it backwards that's kind of his thing or whatever and he's standing up here because i feel like he understands the gravity of the situation like people are going to ask him about retirement and i don't i honestly think he just he doesn't know he doesn't want to retire but he knows that he should and it's tough to watch and also him talking about the rehydration and everything like he said he went down to 167 that's not ideal like if you're fighting at 170 he didn't look big in there he didn't look filled out. He didn't look chiseled. Uh, I thought Chiesa looked a lot bigger. Tony's 5'11". He should be able to fight at 170. He won the he won the Ultimate Fighter at 170. But I don't know if he filled out the way he should have to get to 170 this time. That has a lot to do with why he lost the grappling exchanges with Chiesa. Uh, you can't just focus on one thing. And we did a lot of sparring. Obviously, I could, you could see that out there. I felt pretty good on my feet. Uh, timing uh, Chiesa's... Uh, different antics, what I knew where he was going to shoot in. Felt super slow going in, fighting for hands when I went for wrestling. Um, I felt sick. <laughs> I threw up probably like maybe like three to four times being nervous as fuck. I usually don't get nervous, but in the back I was kind of like yakking and dry heaving, which is kind of funny how that works. But this is the only sport that makes me do that. When it goes to any other thing, uh, it's kind of interesting how it goes. But um, I think more than anything else is because I want to perform to the best of my ability out here. And I really did. Um, like I said, I felt a little slow and sluggish, but uh, congrats to Michael Chiesa. It's not his fault, that's mine. So he speaks on feeling slow and sluggish, and honestly, that's how he's looked the last few fights. I think all that is is father time. Father time is undefeated, as they say. Like, he's 40 years old, he's lost a few steps, unfortunately. Some guys are lucky, and they don't. Especially heavyweights and light heavyweights, bigger guys, they seem to be able to fight a lot longer. Perhaps it's because they're not relying on their speed and athleticism. But Tony's definitely not looking the same. He's been looking very slow, very sluggish, unathletic in his last few fights. And I think it's just age. But another interesting thing he says here is how, you know, he was yakking, he was throwing up before the fight. And he says that not, doesn't usually happen. I think Tony knows that this was his last sort of chance. Like he's been beaten seven times in a row at lightweight. And now he's gone up to 170 for one last crack. Like if he could get a win, then maybe he could revive his career or maybe he could go out on his sword as a winner but I think he knew the gravity of the situation. A lot of things obviously I need to work on, but it's all putting together, obviously getting in there and feeling more comfortable inside that octagon. When you, sometimes when you lose or when you get hit or when you get knocked out, sometimes that the lights, when you get in there, you see it in the fighter's eyes that you can kind of be like, oh, he's not in here. I felt normal in there for a second. I was like, okay, I'm in this zone. This is where I belong. If I didn't feel that, then it would be easier for me to throw both of my gloves down. That's why it was a little bit harder for me to kind of decide Obviously, I'm going to go and talk to my wife. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't feel like you guys want to retire from this every time, right? So it's kind of interesting. You have to think about it a little bit more and more. So, I mean, I got... Look, I get what he's saying there. Like, he said he felt good and he didn't feel like the moment was too much for him. He was sort of in the zone. So in that sense, he's like, why am I going to retire if I still feel like I can do this? But the reality is, like, you got finished in the first round for the third time, I think, in four fights. And the eighth time in a row, you've lost, man. And he's trying to sort of relate it to the reporters there. Like, you guys probably wouldn't want to retire from your profession. And I get that, but it's different. It's very different. Like, he's relying on athleticism and speed and recovery and being able to take shots. And unfortunately, 
he doesn't seem to be able to do that anymore. And uh, I think that's just a tough pill to swallow. Fanta right here, and I just, my kids are probably going to hate me because I'm eating, I'm drinking it, but I'm going to bring it back to them. So I'm just looking forward to going to see my boys and enjoy the rest of Abu Dhabi. You know, congratulations to Michael Chiesa. That one's a long time in the making. I'm not going to say if he fought prime Tony, right, what would happen, but I'm going to be real. We got a chance to be able to do this. So uh, in the near future, maybe we can uh, seal some deals with some other guys with a furry hat. You know, <laughs> you said that. That was interesting. He's saying, in other words, he wants to fight one of the uh, Dagestanis. I've got to be honest. If Tony doesn't want to retire, and this is like, I just thought of this right now, this is probably a ridiculous thing to think. If Tony doesn't want to retire, and Khabib wants to come out of retirement, just hear me out, I know this is fucking wild. If Tony refuses to retire, and Khabib is thinking about coming out of retirement, and he wants a legacy fight, let's be honest, a kind of an easy fight. I understand that Khabib versus Connor would do way more numbers than this, but how much would the diehard fans love to see Khabib versus Tony? And you know what? Fuck it. Like, not even in the octagon. Let's just see a grappling match between Khabib and Tony. Let's get Craig Jones to invite them to the CGI for a grappling match. Khabib versus Tony. Finally get the fight that everyone wanted to see years ago and put a ribbon on it. That can be Tony's send-off fight. A grappling match in front of millions of people against Khabib. No one gets hurt. Two older guys, two legends of the sport, giving it one last crack. I want to see it. That'd be awesome. I've been fortunate enough to meet really cool professional athletes, especially when I was little. That paved that way. Not one professional athlete, including Brock. Brock was nice to me. Brock's an asshole to everybody. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys know him personally, but I mean, that's my coach. <laughs> David Goggins, same thing. I went through so much different things, but I have to keep challenging myself like that. That way it makes me feel a lot better about myself. I don't know why, it just does. I have a lot of gold medals. I have some silver and I have some bronze and now I have a couple losses. I got a couple records. I've got performance of the nights. I got finishes of the nights. I got fucking every little side quest that there is in this sport. Who the fuck else is gonna do that? Only a boat, dog. Like that's the only shit. Goats come and go and boats stay float. And I think that's why a lot of you fans like me is because I'm always talking shit. I'm always going to be me and I know what the fuck I've done in this whole sport. So thank you. He's absolutely right. Like he's done everything there is to do in the sport except get that title. But obviously that's probably not going to happen. But I just feel like, yes, that is the reason everybody loves him. That's the reason everybody respects Tony Ferguson and nobody's talking shit about him today. But it's also the reason people want to see him retire. And uh, it's unfortunate because nobody wants to be the one telling somebody they can't do their job anymore. Positive Dana White doesn't want to tell him that anymore. But at some point, somebody does have to tell him, whether it's his wife, whether it's his coach, or whether it just comes from within, whether he just does some soul searching and realizes like, okay, it's time. Somebody has to tell him. So there we have it. I mean, you can hear in Tony's voice that he just, he doesn't want to give it up, but he knows he should. And how can you not, how can anyone not like this guy? Like just watching him, his face light up when he talks to reporters and he's just so nice and so generous with his time. And even though he's just lost his eighth straight fight, he doesn't want to give that up. He doesn't want to give up what the fans give him, the energy, all the love they show him. But you know, Tony Ferguson's a big name. He's a huge name and he has massive support around the world. I think he has a lot of options to do something other than MMA. You know, whether it's boxing, jujitsu, maybe starting a podcast or opening a gym, like there's there's gotta be doors open for Tony Ferguson to do something else than fight in the UFC because uh, unfortunately he doesn't have it anymore. So I think that might be curtains for him. And I guess now it's up to Dana in the UFC to decide what they're gonna do. Are they gonna tell Tony, that's it? Like, we're not gonna offer you another fight? I'm sure he has more fights left on his deal. Otherwise we would have heard about it. What do you think the next move should be for Tony Ferguson? Do you want to see him hang it up? I have a feeling most of you will. Do you want to see him fighting in another organization? Do you want to see him boxing? Let me know down below in the comments if you made it this far. Please remember to like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Cheers.